Oh, hi. Hi, Kathy. You're you're hi. on. How can we hi. help you today? Hi. Thank you guys so much for taking my call. This of is course. a wonderful, wonderful program. Thank you. How can we help you, Kathy? Uh, you're welcome. Thank you for asking. I am uh, at my wit's end, and I don't with my husband, and I really don't know where to turn at this point. I don't know whether I should get a legal separation or I just go straight for a divorce, and I'll share a little what's going on. Uh, he definitely is a, a narcissist, and uh, he... Um, does not I cannot get him and this has been going on for about twelve years. Can I get him to really communicate with me about anything? Uh he takes his money and he hides his money and he wastes his money and I cannot get him to be as one. He uh just um go through the point to where uh like to sit in the dark and uh, if anything is going on with him he will not just open up with to me and just share What's going on? He just likes sitting in the dark and says something is on his mind and don't want to share that. Uh, he refuses to be intimate. And once again, it's been about 12 or 13 years. Um, Kathy, how, how hurtful, Kathy, how hurtful and crazy making for you that you can't get your husband to talk to you. What, what do you think I his secret be... addictive behavior is? That, I don't know because he's not talking. So, uh, what, what do you suspect? Do you, do you suspect pornography use or alcohol substance use? It's, it, he's not an alcoholic. Uh, he is an extreme smoker, not the uh, drugs, but uh, cigarettes. And that's another thing. He's, he's in bad health, and a doctor's been talking to him about that, and he will not correct his diet. He would just constantly smoke, and then he quit there for and a little Ka bit. Kathy, e Kathy e yeah. even though this is a scary question, what do you think about pornography use? Y you know what? Maybe so, because I've been processing that and trying to think about when we were dating. I remember when uh, I was dating, and when I began to go to his home to date, to uh, see him, he had this big bag of something, and I asked him what it was, and he said, "Yeah, don't it don't matter, don't worry about it." He's just getting rid of it, and it sounds like a bunch of uh, what are those? Uh, not the eight tracks, the CDs, the uh, DVDs. The it sounds like the tape. Oh. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I can hear the rattle of the bag, so I do. I do there, believe that's what it was. There's been secrecy for a long time, ever since you've known him. Yeah, perhaps. have you been married longer than 12 years? I've been married 20 years. Okay, so it wasn't always like this. And what happened? Maybe 12... on the surface, but... But underneath Sorry. it was. Because I'm wondering, did something yeah, happen 12 years ago? that kind of changed the course of things for him? The only thing that I would think that happened, maybe, when I really began to see well, that he... Hold uh, that thought. Kathy, hold that. Thought was. Kathy, hold that thought. We're going to take a break. You can hear the music, and we're going to come back. We're still taking calls at 1-800-229-3000. It's, it's really hard to be connected to a spouse that won't talk to you, and we feel your pain, Kathy. We're going to... We're going to help you when we get back. If you know, it's interesting because you'd think that marriage is this blissful state, yet we hear so <laughs> many different versions of it. But there is hope and there's help for a better connection, and that's what we're going to help you with, Kathy, when we get back. I'm so glad you're here. We are talking to Kathy, and by we, I'm saying <laughs> Dr. Alice Benton and Dr. Jill Hubbard and myself, Becky Brown. And Kathy, we um, we want to help you. Um, Jill or Alice, who do you who well, wants to Well, we start? were trying to see, Kathy, that, you know, you've been married 20 years. Certainly there's some things that have been d enduring throughout that time. But it seems like you've really made a point of saying the last 12 years is really when he shut down. And so I'm wondering if something occurred at that time in his life. Well, that's what I've been trying to battle with myself. But I know... Uh, last year, he had a, a medical issue to where he uh, it was near uh, death experience, and when mm -hmm. he came up out of that, he was in that for about three months. So when he came out of that and got better and came home, that's when I seen the worst of it. 
it was horrible. Uh, when he got better, he was teasing me the whole time he was in the hospital, which is not true, that uh, I stole some money out of his bank account. And, oh, so he's gotten paranoid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And because he's really obsessed with money. He's very obsessed with money. Everything is, is, is revolves around money for him. But uh, worse than that, he uh, just uh, just will not talk to me and and he, uh, I was trying well, to ask him about, you know, go ahead. It sounds like he's really afraid. And mm-hmm. so when we're afraid, control kicks in. And that's, I mean, don't you guys think that's what she's mm-hmm. dealing with is his control is just overwhelming. And it could be the near-death experience. It's not going to help to just keep asking him because he's just going to lock down more. But um. well, and in you know, in life, you said he has some narcissistic traits. You believe, you yeah. know. So if you're grandiose about life, right, and you have all of these ideals, at a certain point in life, that starts to break down, and somebody with those characteristics has a really hard time with that. That's like mm-hmm. intolerable yes. that they can't realize their dreams. Mm-hmm. And so that's where you'll see a lot of paranoia kick in, mm-hmm. right? And this kind of obsessively holding on to anything that they can. Well, and even the fact if he's if he does have narcissism or mm-hmm. narcissistic qualities, the fact that he could he almost died mm-hmm. is a threat. Well, aging is a yes. threat to yes. a narcissist, right? Yes. Exactly. And Kathy, we we suspect well, that you just what lie about yeah, it's it starts with it's probably started with his character defects, and that has evolved into some mental health issues, mm-hmm. probably depression as well, and paranoia. Yeah. And so, if you have had a tendency to stay a little quiet, to not, of course, not know what to do and not know how to handle this, what we want to do is empower you to start taking the action you can with what's in your control. And the Bible lays out the steps of what to do in the Book of Matthew, where it tells us first we address it head on and we do it with grace and truth that as as Jill was saying earlier the way we've been these past 12 years it's not working for me anymore and I want more than this for both of us Mm -hmm. so are you willing to consider to get help with me and if whether he is or not if you're not I'm gonna get the help because I want better than this for us and you start to take action that, but the Bible also tells us bring in a witness so that another person, preferably a man who has some standing in his life, addresses him as well that this isn't right, that your family needs better than this. But then, Kathy, no matter what he does, you take the action of getting an appointment with a therapist and strategizing what to do. And all that should happen before the legal separation and definitely before mm-hmm. the divorce because the action you take may have an effect on him to start changing things. Well, and I think as women, because we run everything through our primary relationship, we often think that we have to get rid of the relationship in order to then live or in order to do the things we want to do. And what Alice is suggesting is you start doing the things that you need to do and want to do now before you take those steps towards the relationship. So So make your life better first. And then you'll have more clarity as to what to do about the marriage. And it's a tough truth is that the Bible gives very narrow permission for a biblical divorce, which is abandonment by a spouse and infidelity. And apart from that, God seems to want us to work through it, taking the other steps we can to protect ourselves, um, but also to call the other person up and out. That's so true. Thank you both. Um, Thanks, Kathy, for calling. I'm actually going to send her a copy of How We Love because I think that will give her some insight into the dynamics of the relationship, but also can help her as she continues to heal and grow. And right now we're going to talk to Ann, who's calling us from Potomac, Maryland, and listens on WAVA, another one of our favorite stations. Hi, Ann. I'm so glad you called. How can we help you today? Uh, I have, I've been married for 37 years, going on 38. I have four sons, and uh, they all are adult males, obviously. <laughs> and, uh, they, they range from about 43 to 27. The oldest has children, the others do not. And um, we get together. We've always enjoyed family time 
Okay, and yes. and hold on one second. You can hear the music. We're going to go to a break and come right back to, and okay. answer your question. We're still taking calls, 1-800-229-3000, and we will talk to you, Anne, when we come back. It is uh, always a challenge. Families and marriages, it's, you know, relationships. They're, they're sticky. They're complex, but they're worth working on. And so that's what we're talking about today. We're talking about all kinds of things today, but that, that seems to be a theme. And so if you have an issue that you'd like to talk to us about, you can call us 1-800-229-3000 and we'll be right back. 